are you? Sarah McLeod, from the Clan McLeod. A Highlander, you say? Just like you. What are you? A ghost. No. You're an immortal. Just like you. <laughs> Good. That is a perfect place to start. Here we are, born to be kings, we're the princes of the universe. Here we belong, fighting to survive in a world with the darkest powers. And across the skies, fire rained. It dropped from the heights where the gods claimed to rule and illuminated the empire of the Romans. It was beautiful, terrifying. But were they angry? The Empire viewed such things as fortuitous, as a sign. It could be ill omen, it could be a blessing. But on this night, in 42 AD, it was undecided. Pruitt, somewhere in the Roman Empire, Someone is being born. Tell us about it. Born in the uh, fields along the Tiber River north of the, um, the capital itself to a would-be failed blacksmith's apprentice and uh, just a woman who works the fields herself, Marcus Romulus Tiberius is born under these omens. Some, some call for a, this will be a good harvest. Some of the soldiers speak of a coming campaign in a far off land called Britannia, and that this is obviously, uh, this is Mars blessing for a successful campaign. Uh, and that any, any son or daughter of Rome born under such an auspicious sign would carry the banner, the light of civilization a little bit further, for they are truly blessed. And so as the act of childbirth is undertaken, and as the skies rain fire, and as there is a hopeful nature to this birth that 
does speak of hope. The time comes and it passes and parents cradle newborn babe. And for a moment, his father goes over to the doorway and watches the skies as they cry. And he smiles. He smiles as his eyes drift towards the fire. Far north during the same night, when the sky rained fire, another birth was taking place. Another birth, a beginning. There in this era, in this culture, fear dominated the skies. As the fire rains, something must be wrong. What have we done? What hell has been unleashed? And there was no question of hope or ill omen. This was a sign of dread. Very much so. But there was another birth. Alice. Tell us about it. She was born on the same night, the night that most of her tribe believed the sky was falling. And many of them would yell that they had angered the gods. Some of them said it was the earth itself. Others said it was the god Morrigan of fate and that this was a sign, not necessarily a good one. A female god, no less, for a female child that was born. Some would, seeing this event, many would rush down to the river with trinkets and metalworks that had been of importance and of worth and split them in two, offering them to the waters and thus the gods passing them back into the earth. It didn't matter how much they gave to the water. The sky didn't stop falling. And so as the same cries of birth and fear pass through the village and the mother who entered the world that night? Brenna entered the world, born to a tribe, used to female leaders. Normally, this is not a bad sign. If anything, this is a strong sign. Their women fight, their women are strong, but there's something ominous in the sky tonight and there is fear in the air. And so with that fear being captured and encapsulated in the birth, Brenna, of an embodiment of what is occurring. And as you said, despite the, the parallel and the even nature between the sexes, and especially this time, there was still It was tainted. And as your mother gave birth, your father held you not. And instead, he went and cowered a bit as he looked 
past the threshold out into the sky. And as a Roman father's eyes danced among the burning stars, so too did Brenna's father. But what they saw were two very different things. And so, Alice, as Brenna has grown to the warrior that she is to become, and as a battle is being waged for not the skies, as was the theater of her birth, but instead of the land beneath her, an invader has come, calling themselves the Romans. We are on a field of battle instead of the normal way in which battle is conducted, instead of the rushing and the violence and the chaos, perhaps, that Brenna is accustomed to with just sheer might and ferocity being the strongest arm given the victory of the day instead comes marching in perfect unison rows and squares and shapes of metal clad men and as they march up the hill your people attack and perhaps it makes you feel more at ease but throughout the course of the battle in your area their line is shattered and where once order reigned, the chaos upon which you are accustomed began to bleed out onto the field, just as Roman blood began to stain the soil. You are standing amidst this beautiful maelstrom. You see your people fighting valiantly against these turtles, against these shiny humans and before you one of them marches a bit disconcerted by not having someone to his left and someone to his right by not having someone barking orders from behind but there on the field before a great lightning struck tree that still gives its bare branches shade from the sky and as you turn and look you see the sky is darkening but it is not time for it to darken something is afoot but you have an enemy in front of you what do you do the sky above her has darkened and to her to me this is a sign whether it's her time has come or she had been told tales of the day of her birth. She's not sure if it's good or bad, but she was there at the beginning of the battle where they formed a strong line, a line that we broke. One man is far easier to break than a line. So she draws her sword and as she has been taught, she charges brute force fully intending whether she hits them with her blade or with her body itself to knock them. Very good. So make me a might roll as you charge this 
Use whatever attack you would like as you charge this Roman. Nice. And so as you barrel into them with your weapons at, describe to us, how does she fight? Brutally, you mentioned, with what? Bare hands? What weapons does she wield? And how does she strike this man that has dared to step on her soil? There is a clash of metal as she strikes, whether it's on their armor or on their shield. She had a shield at one point, but it was split. She searched the battlefield for another, but at this time she only has this sword, this rough blade with some knocks in it. It's not perfect, but it does the job and she swings wildly and when she has her other hand spare she will grab the opponent to try and run them through but there's no elegant technique here this is trusting her feelings her emotions and her instincts she is always ready for the next move and with those instincts definitely at play. And as you go to run through this Roman that you have grasped and bloodied, drawing a line across them as you rip through, not shield or armor, but flesh is dug into as it gets just through both of these. And the man stunned by the might at which you are throwing yourself, the anger, the rage, that's controlled enough to, to deliver such precise blows. He raises his own sword, a, a thick blade, as he tries to bring it down on top of you. Um, roll me a defense, a might defense, as he is just wildly chopping at you. Okay, so as you, as he comes down, you are able to catch at wrist as you grab hold of his sword arm, redirecting his own control. And at this point, you have both his shield arm wide and his sword arm held. What do you do now? With his shield arm held, she draws back the blade and she runs it through him and pulls upwards until the blade leaves his body again. Roll me one more might attack, please. Okay, so this time when you go to, uh, this time when you go to draw in and drag into the um, armor as you want to lift and gut this man, the Roman armor holds and the iron that was dug from the ground of a land far away holds enough and as the broken and knocked blade slips off of the armor he looks again and tries to take his shield now and drive it into the side of your face roll another might defense for me please you feel a smash across your own face as the gore of your enemies now mingles with your own as a line is drawn from left eye down to your cheekbone ripped apart by the edge of the shield and upon seeing you step back stunned a bit by this blow the roman in front of you begins to ignore the the, the wound that you gave him as he feels the confidence the pride the better than come back and before you a proud roman views nothing more than a woodland peasant what would you like to do she knows how they view her and she has been knocked prone many times before and how her father taught her in fact her mother she sweeps her leg out to take his feet from beneath him 
in one smooth move, almost with a slight smile on her face. She's glad that he's underestimating her. Alrighty, roll me another might attack as, as you, or speed, whatever you'd like to do here. With another clash as the two of you go at it, uh, the Roman begins to think that this is doable. The fear of being alone with no one to the right and no one to the left, he's able to feel a surge. He blocks off your blow and attacks. Roll me a might defense, please. This time you're able to redirect his blow to the ground and for a, a brief moment between the T of the helmet, you see the eyes again go wide with disbelief. You have an opening. With that slip between the helmet, she sees her chance and she will thrust her blade right into that small gap, making sure she makes eye contact at the same time. Oh dear, she's not going to do this. And as it skips off the side of the helmet, it does knock the helmet askew a bit and the man reaches up as it bent the nose piece and he grabs the helmet and throws it to the ground, revealing a dark haired man beneath as he is standing there, a line of blood caused from the bending and rending of the helmet. As he pulls it off and drops it to the ground, he looks and stares at you as he comes in again with his own sword, this time swinging low, seeming to chop your large frame down. Make me a might defense, please. Uh, you feel at this point a huge bite along your thigh as the flesh gives way beneath the, the, the coverings that are you're using to protect yourself. They part beneath Roman steel. And as your blood flows freely down your leg again the thought of roman blood staining and drying this ground is now an afterthought as your own becomes the hue of choice on this particular patch and above the sky gets darker he is pressing the attack what would you like to do she gasps and like sort of ah and sort of starts to breathe heavily, not being able to control her breaths for a moment before sort of steadying herself. And from this lower position where she inst instinctively grabs her leg with her other sword arm, will rise up her blade and try and stab straight into his thigh. In a attack that mirrors the one that was just dealt to you as you take your blade you are finally able to insert and lift as you had tried to do several beats before only this time it skips beneath the leather plated skirt that this armored man is wearing hits his own thigh just above the knee enters skips off bone and lifts and as the man stares in shock and pain he drops his weapons as if his own bare hands could somehow put himself back together and as he crumples bending in an awkward inhuman way he falls to the ground just before you his dark hair and blue eyes meet yours for a moment and then they meet something else and the sky darkens the battle rages around you there is a large lightning struck tree just in front of you chaos reigns you have a moment with this deceased roman what will you do She'll withdraw her blade, but not without twisting it first. So if her face curls up in like a grimace, but she's not happy and 
trying to catch her breath again, she touches her leg and sees this blood that has stained her hand. She doesn't wipe it off. She wipes it down the side of her face. The red contrasting with the woad that was painted on before battle. And she scans the battleground, trying to find another Roman to lock eyes with. And as you scan the ground, I will leave you mechanically with this, Alice. Brenna has suffered 10 points of damage, which in your mortal form we have discussed before. So keep that in mind. But as your eyes scan around, you see nothing but the tree for a moment. Tiberius, you are on foreign ground, but the surprise of the day came when the lines broke. The rage of these people, perhaps underestimated by the higher ups. Before you is a large lightning struck tree. Around you, you see the legion moving in disarray, something that shouldn't happen. You yourself have been wounded by strikes from the left and right flanks that should not have been exposed, but you stand steadfast. And as this chaos, so unlike Roman military precision, rages around you, a large, wild-haired man with a receding hairline, but still flocked around the back, comes forward with lengths of leather tied from beard and from remaining hair. He carries a half-moon axe and the blood of more than one Roman. Sees you, eyes you, like a prize to be found in the forest and not the field, and begins to advance. What do you do, Tiberius? Um, first, Tiberius, he would um, <clears throat> scream out, calling for order, um, trying to get any men around to form up. But he levels his shield and spear, his spatha is at his hip, um, and he prepares to, to meet this barbarian's advance. Um, as you call out, you see that several of the men closest to you begin to move toward you, but the rage of battle, much like an ocean with currents beneath the surface, pull them away as they try to reform. You see pockets of this happening everywhere on the field as Roman instinct is to band together. But on this particular soil, it's proving to be quite a challenge. And as the soil moves like the ocean, the sky is doing something different as well. It's getting dark too dark for midday. And as this man advances, you are a Roman. Tell me how you attack him. Well, uh, I will, maintaining uh, perfect footwork, uh, shuffle forward and then lunge at the last second, uh, extending with the spear strike, uh, trying to thrust for his groin. Um, many uh, lose the heart when you attack them at their weakest. Roll me what? that attack. <clears throat> Woo! So as you dig deep, you can do an extra point of damage and uh, tell me what exactly occurs as you get to tell this part of the story. Uh, seeing this, 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 uh, this barbarian kind of bearing down on him, he kind of whispers uh, a quiet prayer on his lips, Vulcan. Bless this shield, Mars, bless my arm. And then he thrusts forward directly, uh, his spear sinking deep, uh, just below the belt line of this, of this Celt. And as the Celt rears back and 
his advance as Point digs into hip, as Point moves across, lining his leathers with blood that is now his own. He stumbles but maintains enough poise to rear back and bring the mighty axe down on you. Make a might defense roll for me, please. Okay. And this is just a base one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a special place for might defense? Uh, you can just roll might if you'd like because it would, at this point it would be... Okay, so oh, I as... I rolled twice, sorry. Yeah, I saw, I saw, yeah, the first one's good. So as you see this axe coming down, tell me how you redirect it. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I just stabbed the uh, spear. So basically just tossing the spear to the side and deflecting it up and high with my shield, pulling out the spatha, uh, getting ready to just hack him right at the legs. Let's, let's do that then. Okay. So, yeah. So that one was that one was a five though, right? That one came out first as a. Why does it yeah. keep double rolling? Sorry, I guess. I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. no, no problem. Uh, so as again you come through, the man sees your maneuver. He has the blood of Romans on him. Perhaps he has seen this particular maneuver before. And as the shield redirects his axe, he readies an arm. And as you thrust with your sword, he actually brings a meaty fist against the flat of the blade, driving it away. And as it skips to the side, he turns and with the same fist, throws a punch towards your jaw beneath your helm. Uh, roll me a might defense, please. Okay. Okay. So as uh, the fist comes forward, and with this being a special circumstance, tell me how you redirect this and cause damage to the kelp. Um, I, I, I don't redirect it. I go with it and I roll and roll my shield and bring it down on his on the outside of his knee as I roll past him as he brings this around. And so it happens as you roll, you hear a crunch as whatever was in the sturdy knees, the the once whole um, integrity is lost and you hear a pop and there is a grunt as the shattered knee hits the soil drenched in blood. The same leg where the hip has been compromised by spear point and he turns and snarls but you now have your own attack what would you like to do and and completing the roll kind of coming up uh in a low squat I'm just going to come with a backhand swipe and try to catch him right at the neckline as he turns and and looks at me okay so as Jesus. So as this hits, military precision is um, something else. Tell me how you dispatch this kelp. Yeah, like I, like I said, you know, he threw the punch, rolled with it, popped his knee, did a perfect roll coming up, perfect backhand, catching him right below the jawline in a perfect swipe. He doesn't even, his face doesn't change as it tumbles to the ground. That look of defiance, that snarl still there staring at Tiberius even in death. And then he flicks the blood off the blade. And as you do so, and as you watch, as you've dispatched this mountain of a man, his shattered knee met with his body, met with his face, as the ground he was defending now becomes his final resting spot. As this occurs, again, the legion around you, trying desperately to reform, but still shattered and sundered amidst the tide of battle. You are clear for a moment before you, just the lightning struck tree. What do you do? Um, <clears throat> he just kind of like stands there, kind of uh, maybe lost a bit in the revelry of the moment. His father always filled his head with notions of, of glorious Roman conquest and the, the, the glory of serving in the legions. And he, he looks around at his kind of his chaotic allies and just kind of lets out a, 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 a furious call to Mars. Um, just lets out a, just a bellow from Mars to give him strength. And also just kind of 
be a, a, a call to his allies to form up and any enemy that would dare stand against him in this his moment of triumph. Make me an intellect roll here, just straight up. Unless you've got something to add to it that uh, works. Okay. So as you yell to Mars, for a moment, the ground and the air and the country around you takes you as a normal blessing or cry of gratitude from a Roman mouth sounds more like these barbarians that you are fighting and several of the legion ignore the call thinking it just another one of these backwater people shouting to some pagan god yeah but as you're standing there and as you're looking in front of this blasted tree in front of this in this unholy land a wind strikes from the sky as it gets darker a great wind and for a moment several of the the people on the field that are in weakened conditions begin to actually move with it the balance is lost opportunities are gained and as this occurs and blows across this wind of change it grabs the ancient tree the tree that was struck 28 years ago during the night when the fire rained from the sky and it finally blows the corpse of this great wood over and as it cracks and pulls from the loose earth and as it drags this root system up it exposes the top of the hill as it begins to slide down the other side the rumbling beneath your feet not unlike an earthquake and as it falls and pools and rents the ground, it clears the path of the battlefield. And you see the eyes of a Celtic warrior just on the other side, or where would have been the other side of this great lightning struck tree. The two of you stare at one another. You have searched for another enemy and at the feet of each of you is a comrade of the other. You now meet gazes as the sky continues to darken overhead. What do you do? I, uh, I point my spatha at this, at this Celt. I think it's a female. It's hard to tell with these. And he yells out uh, a, a challenge which, you know, he knows that she probably can't understand him, but a challenge on a battlefield looks the same and no matter what language it's spoken in. She stares at you briefly, just silently, doesn't reply, but again with her bloodied hand reaches up and just spreads it across her face and takes a fairly animalistic stance and just waits for you. So as the two of you now have a field in front of you in which to pursue, to close, and to fight, uh, let's roll some initiative. Let's see, did I get yours? it or was that a oh i just rolled a speed defense i mean i can actually click initiative. oh no that's no that's perfectly fine yeah, perfectly I mean, fine i didn't see it mixed in there with the intellect okay so uh alice you have won the initiative for this round what would you like to do as you advance on the roman she's seeing him without any comrades starts to circle him just looking for a weak spot for a weak moment she sees that he has a shield and she stalks him until she finds an opening before lunging forward <laughs> with this blade sort of 
it's not a thrust, it's a definite swipe from up to down, or if the shield is too low, it's from um, down to up and across. All right, so uh, at this point, we're going to do a little PvP. Uh, we have special rules while we're still mortals, so just go ahead and roll me them d20s, and we'll see what we do here. With a roll beating the Roman, tell me how you deliver a wound to the very effective Tiberius. Sort of seeing that gap in his shield, it's more of a slice up this up his side, almost just finding that one gap in his armor, and it stings, and it's it's almost like a growl, a very slow growl emits as she clenches her teeth and sort of goads him. And Tiberius Pruitt, what does the the Roman think now that this large man has been dispatched with relative ease? This woman has now drawn Roman blood, your blood, and seems to be very aware of it. Mm. Yeah, he he narrows his eyes through his helmet, almost almost a look of um, respect, maybe. Um, at that at that movie wasn't expecting it to be so quick um <clears throat> and so he kind of doubles down and uh he's going to try to regain his composure uh defensively and uh and stab uh and break her root try to go for her legs because she can't be quick if she can't walk and uh alice go ahead and roll your d20 for defense do you want a straight up might roll or a d20 sorry uh whichever one you all want to do as far as as long as there's no modifiers on it it's the same roll that we're going to get yeah. so alice describe to me as this attack comes in low to rob you of the traction that's already been compromised by your thigh wound how do you get away from it she doesn't she doesn't step away, she sort of slams her sword into the ground so that his metal meets hers. And almost just like, keeping that eye contact, pushes away and draws her sword back up. A slight smile. She's feeling a bit overconfident, but she can't help it. Okay, so first off, this is me wanting a captured art moment of this part. So you brought your sword down to deflect the low blast and we almost had a reverse of the traditional upward facing crossed swords inches from each other's face only they were both, you're both almost on your knees kneeling inches from your face. I like that very much. I wish I was an artist, I am not. Um, it, do, it works and occurs exactly as is described. Alice, it is now your attack. I will need d20s from both of you to see who succeeds or who fails. So, with another attack, aiming true, tell me, with smirk wielded just as effectively as sword, how do you wound the Roman again? After she's sort of plunged her sword into the ground and it's blocked and they're both down low, quickly withdrawing the blade again, it's almost like as she swings it up and just using her brute force, sort of guiding this blade, tries to bring it crashing down on top of this Roman. She sort of screams at the same time, but you can barely hear it over the rest of the battle. Tiberius, you can hear it. And as this battle cry comes forward you feel a bite creep down your neck right around your trap down your back as somehow this blow has rent armor enough to draw yet more of your blood from your body as you are able to fight through this the two of you with eyes locked one through helm one beneath paint and blood 
you both look just about even as far as the damage that has been dealt to you. Tiberius. Uh, Brenna, this is a clash round that we have right now. And so this is an element from the duels that will be occurring when everyone's an immortal. And I wanted to start working with them right now. You will see that you have five special attacks to choose from between your intellect attacks. At this point, I would like you to select one, but don't click it yet. On the count of three, I will ask you to select your attack, much like rock, paper, scissors, and anyone that used to hang out in the Red Dragon Inn back on America Online. This is the old Duel of Swords. So go ahead and on three, one, two, three. So, with two cuts as they come in, cuts by their very definition, both hit. So, as you both cut into one another, you both score a very powerful wound against one another. And as you drive these wounds into your... I want to know how the Roman attacks the Celt and how the Celt attacks the Roman as the two of you explode into one another. Dance, my friends, tell me a story. So, uh, I'm, can we say that, uh, that, that the uh, Celt's first last strike uh, kind of took my shield and took me on the left side, so his shield kind of falls away as that arm doesn't quite become useless, but he can't bear the weight. No, not today, buddy. Um, uh, <laughs> fighting off a monk and a Celt at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and then he's just going to like fall back and like look down and look at this Celt and seeing a real fight before him, he he kind of loses some of his Roman compo composure and just swings sideways uh, trying, to, trying to catch her just below her sword arm, like right in the side. Yeah, as um, you swing for her arm. She's not ready for it as you fall and she's sort of bringing down her sword at the same time and whether it catches on your hilt or the shield as you drop it it's more that she slides the blade along yours to just try and strike you in the other shoulder just digging it in. And the two of you do just that as you bear into one another and as both of you feel the bite deep go deep into the flesh of your enemies you are able to withdraw but as you do so you see that each of you are perhaps wounded beyond the point of recovery as blood now pours from multiple wounds of both Celt and Roman frame you are all, you're both still locked in, locked in the gaze of the moment, but the din of the battle begins to pull away. The sky above continues to darken as both of your sights continue to darken. We're gonna do another clash round to see how this ends. Because technically you're both on the threshold right now and I want to. So, again, choosing your intellect attacks. The roles do not matter. It is simply what the players choose. On the count of three, I would like you to pick one more. One, two, three. Okay, so as this comes to pass, and as the Celt lunges forward in a thrust meant to skewer a Roman. Pruitt, tell me how Ty Tiberius dodges and tell me how he lands a blow to the Celt. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> Tiberius seeing the wounds uh, as they are, um, uh, he just, he literally just kind of does uh, a very, a very slow turn but it's just enough as he, he just turns out of the way of uh, the Celt's thrust and then swings around uh, as she has now kind of moved past him and follows her up uh, 
and is striking for her back. Roman steel bites deep. And as you feel the rest of your blood rushing from your back, you have one moment left to do something. Alice, what does the Celt do? She grabs her side, like, oh, and that is a scream, sort of erupts from her lungs, knowing that she's got nothing left in that one boost of adrenaline. She sort of turns as you strike her in the back and just brings her sword straight down, almost as if to pierce the earth, but to go through the Roman at the same time. Roll me d20s. And as the final strike of the Celt pulls sword down, Tiberius, you feel a bite into your own side as somehow this mad woman has defeated death long enough to ensure your own. The two yeah, of you... He, yeah, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, after his last strike, he was sure that he had taken this Celt down <clears throat> and the battle that she gave, he was basically bringing his spath up to, as a kind of a salute, uh, just like, just to give give her that bit of honor. And it was in that moment of uh, overconfidence that yes, she wasn't quite dead. And with the salute of honor, as you drive home your final point, you are both again embraced, but this time the ground is rushing up to both of you you have a moment where the two of you gaze is still locked, but darkening as the sky ahead above is going to pitch black. These are the last moments of Tiberius and Brenna. What goes through the minds of each? He, uh, through coughing blood <clears throat> and getting just enough air for one last sentence. <clears throat> hey. Your gods take you, as I know mine will take me. Brenna, as much as she locks eyes, they're wild and she can't muster words to this Roman, but she digs her fingers into the earth, just <coughs> and probably falls down onto her chest still clutching her sword, just whispers, Morrigan, take me. And she'll let her eyes close, feeling relief. And as these two warriors say their goodbyes to one another and life above, the sky takes away the light. And as the light is taken from the sky, and as the life, or at least the first life, is taken from the Celt and the Roman, they sleep. The next thing the two of you know, you 
awaken to a star-filled sky. The bodies of comrades and enemies everywhere, but the sounds of battle, even the sounds of the dying, the groans are gone. You would estimate that five or six hours has passed, but you are both laying side by side on the field where you had fallen. And as both eyes flicker open, the gaze that ended life begins life. What do you do? Uh, Tiberius would immediately like shoot up clutching at his at his mortal wounds on his side uh, and and his arm and he like looks down and looks up at this this Celt uh, in just stunned disbelief as he surveys the battlefield Brenna sort of making eye contact shakes it away sort of almost again trying to rip at her wounds as she aches and she looks down to the earth and then up at the sky and at, at her wounds again and she's like you didn't take me they refused me why did why, why, why did they refuse me they're not letting me return to the earth and she starts sort of gripping her hands in this dirt again and looking at the blood on her hands it's what father said gods refuse me and um, as this this barbarian is gibbering something in a language he doesn't understand as it, it when, when Tiberius feels at his side it, does his hand find a wound no And this this look of like confusion and uh, and bewilderment is kind of replaced with just almost an exultation, as he's like, "My father was right. Mars has blessed me. The gods, thank you." And he drops to his knees. Thank you. I will do your bidding. I will bring the light to all those. Brenna, about halfway through the strange language of this Roman beside you, you both feel a queasiness in your stomach, a a, a, a momentary nausea, a, a one usually wrought of motion of of a, a thundering horse or an elevation change but it passes but as it's passing his gibberish you understand it somehow you understand his words she staggers back trying to look around for her blade. She realizes there are no wounds, but she still is weak on her feet. Sort of staggers back, maybe not upright, and very limply holds the blade towards them. Like, oh, you speak of false gods. Did your gods do this to me? You too understand her. And he, he kind of goes from his his looking at the stars to back down to earth in this kilt false false gods yes false gods that spared me from your from your blade that would take my life from me I don't think these are false I think these gods have made their mark on the world she sort of in almost like a delirious panic is just again, just moving backwards just a little bit. It's like, I, I, I don't understand your this. You, you have done this. The, the, the earth won't take me again. This is no blessing. 
I can I can never sleep with my ancestors. I can never rest. You did this. I did my best. But much like you, and he as this whole time has been slowly like advancing to keep it the distance with with uh, the Celt. And he's like tearing his armor off, like, look, you you stabbed me, you cut me, and I you. <laughs> and yet here we are. What could this not? How could this be a curse? You, you, you wear your scars, your, your wounds with pride. It's what's, it's what. What scars? And he motions to his shoulder that you ruined and now is smooth and clean. And she reaches up to where she was struck earlier. That you took it all from me. After everything, after everything I've worked for, I can't even. Uh, rest. And with you, why you of all people that stands again? I don't, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe we're both right. Maybe the gods are playing a cool trick, cruel trick on both of us. But I know this. I tasted death. And I lived. Why would you want to taste that again? Because it's glorious. Glorious? Living is glorious. We get to breathe another day. We get to see another sunrise. We get to. As she looks around, my people are dead. They were my life. It would have been glorious to fall and lie with them. And instead, I stand again with a Roman. A person who invades and purges others' lands for their own benefit, does not respect anyone other than their own. We only seek to spread light. Education. You spread the wrong kind. Maybe this is a debate for the philosophers. We're both warriors, you and I. We're told to do something and we do it. What I was told to do, I have not done. And what was that? To fight and fall. To kill Romans. I killed you. You should have stayed down. <laughs> I could uh, say the same about you. But wouldn't you rather fight and live for your people? What people? He kind of like looks around the battlefield. You're right. It was foolish of them to meet us in the open field like this. You know that, right? You know, it was wrong to come and scar our lands, right? If not us, it would be another invader. Another after that. So that makes it right? No. It makes it the way it is. One people conquering another, conquering another. And she looks down at the the earth itself and the sort of the dirt under her nails that like, it's not fair. Perhaps if you keep looking, you can find your death. 
that you so exuberantly seek. I, on the other hand, will live. I will live life to the fullest. And hopefully if death comes for me again, I will just wake. I do not know. I will receive death gladly, but I will not fall without a fight. Good. Because you fight well. I do. You are an honor to your people. Again, she's cast to look around. He says nothing. Think of it this way, Kelt. As long as you live, you carry the memory of your people, so they are not truly dead. So had you not lived this day, your people would have died and been forgotten in the annals of time. But now, you may carry their story forward. Think on that. She pauses. May I know the name? of the Roman that slayed me, who I slayed, who stood back up? Yes, you may. And he removes his helmet so you can see his dark hair and blue eyes. My name is Marcus Romulus Tiberius. I was born to peasants, but I will make my mark on this world. You better believe that. And who might you be, O Kelt, that slew me? He's sort of trying to pull some of the blood off her face. It's probably dried now, so you see it sort of more like finger marks crackle through this dry blood. Brenna. I. I am Brenna of the Iceni tribe, and I was born to warriors. Well, regardless of our beginnings, we met the same end, the same moment. Same beginning. Roman uh, Tiberius I do not like you mm. but I do have respect you fight well even if it is strange and Brenna of the Asini clans I respect you I'm beginning to like you, actually. May you carry your warrior's tradition on. Teach it to new people. So that they may fight with the ferocity you have shown here today. And at this moment, I don't know if she would notice, but he's gotten close enough and he's actually has his hand out almost to extend uh, in a shake. She sort of hesitates briefly. and then reaches out and clasps your hand very tightly. And Tiberius, may your false gods always guide you. As may yours. Perhaps we will meet again. I will count on it. And as the two fallen and risen warriors stand beside the fallen tree, as they clasp hands amidst the ruins of the battlefield. A beginning is marked. And we will see where it progresses.
And as 42 years have passed, an interesting number for the two of you, another meeting does take place. And as we watchers pull into this scene, we see the Romans striding from the south, the beginnings of a stone wall, noting its passage just to his north. And we see from the tree line to the north, the Celt striding south towards the same stacked stone until they meet one on one side, one on the other. And so, warriors, I will ask you, what has gone on these past 42 years for both? Well, for Tiberius, um, the events uh, 42 years ago opened his eyes. Uh, he stayed in Britannia. He had to start moving around a bit couple of times having to pull the old oh I got cut off from my unit I guess I'll just join up with yours trying to stay ahead of uh, Rome and their uh, their their annoying census takers they, ke they keep good records so he actually spent some time north of what the wall would be and actually got to know some of the peoples here and it's starting to become a bit disillusioned with the whole purpose. Uh, and even this wall going up, he, he spoke out against it and was punished for it, which is why he finds himself now on the ass end of the uh, territory, basically a glorified patrol guard. Um, and with that, he's starting to have second thoughts about his his time here but he would never uh, tell a fellow Roman that and Brenna for a very long time would wander just walk there was nothing left for her where she originally came from and she would go from tribe to tribe even to Romans and Bite them. She told herself that it was trying to learn these techniques she'd seen. She tried everything. She wanted to learn everything. She didn't know how long she had, but she was definitely trying to see if she could be wounded and killed. Was this just a, a chance that they have both stood up again. A fluke. <laughs> but she throws herself into many fights. One on one sometimes. Two, three on one. And she doesn't die. So instead she tries to learn. Trades. But mainly fighting skills. She feels that let her down. And she too is head of this wall. And she will head towards there, sort of out of intrigue. And again, out of. There's Romans there. Maybe another fight. And so, as the two of you approach the wall, you see one another as you did 42 years ago, except this time there's no fight. This is a land at this point conquered. But you feel that nausea in your stomach, that motion sickness that quickly goes away. And you know upon who you look. What do you say? Brenna 
Bruno is unsure at first, and actually has to take a few more steps closer. And just stares. And after a few moments, like, Tiberius will take his helmet off and put it down, like, on a, on a stone, like, on the wall, and just, like, kind of cock his head to the side a little bit, just like, well met. I see, your, I see your gods have uh, continued to uh, reject you. Yes. They have continued to reject me, much to my disappointment. But there's a new lease of life here. What about you? Did you just love it here too much to return home? No, I thought I... Thought I could help here. Bring stability. Help. And then enough years passed. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what we have done to your people and to your land. I have seen too much. I have. It does not matter. It doesn't. Once the gods stop caring, why should we? I'm still not convinced of that, but I don't oh. think they really care what we do. Yes, yes, I forgot about your false gods. Do you still follow those? Well, I still pay them lip service at least. I still continue to walk. Until I am proven otherwise, I can only believe what my eyes and ears report. And I have seen savagery. And I have seen butchery. And I've seen Roman men wielding the swords that visited both of those upon this place. <laughs> I never actually got to talk about this. I'm sorry. I, um... Are you apologizing? Yes, I... I am. Thank you. I think... If I am the one that cursed you, I apologize. I know how much, um, being with your ancestors means to you now. She nods, sort of looks down briefly. You don't look any different. Nor do you. A little less blood, a little less mud than the last time I saw you, but uh, no worse for wear. No. No lines at your eyes. No additional scars. Mm. Despite... I assume you tried. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And she goes, chuckles at that. I tried. So hard. It's, it's quite fitting, then. Because I, uh... I'm quite the opposite. These Romans keep too good of records. I'm sure you know, so... Try not to, uh, die too often. It becomes suspicious when you run into people who recognize you under a different name in a different unit. So, I don't think I'm long for this place. Really? And she sort of gestures to the wall that I thought you were loving life. Hmm. I do love life. I don't love with what my uh, comrades have done with theirs. Any kind of motions to the wall, this, this vanity project, I... It does no one good. It literally divides us. It's almost mm -hmm. ensuring that war will continue. It will continue until you leave. Then perhaps I should leave. We are stubborn people. 
not necessarily my people so much anymore, but I tell you, they are stubborn. That they are. And I've grown, I've grown to respect your people for that very quality, that tenacity that we Romans think we invented, but obviously not. Your Romans, your people speak of us of animals. Wild people, barbaric. Mm -hmm. But I killed so many of you. And you killed so many of us. That's pretty equal, I'd say. It's true. People often project that which they uh, fear most in themselves. So, of course, we would call you the barbarians. I wear it with pride. Hmm. As well you should. So what about you? What do you plan to do with the rest of this? This? Don't know. Wander for a bit. Might go see where you come from. Do my own little invasion. Go see what happens over there. But it's full of Romans. It's true. I've seen the homeland in quite a while. How long have you not been back at all? Oh, close to 50 years now. I joined rather young to the Legion, so... I don't suppose anyone would recognize me back there. It's probably a good thing. Maybe you would like a guide. It's true. Not bad for a Roman. There are a few sights to see. It's not like you can stab me in the back, is it? Again? <laughs> well, I mean, I can try, but... I'll stab you back. I would expect nothing less. Maybe. Could be fun. Got nothing else to do. I feel I've been almost everywhere. And... If I do join you, I will put your side as your equal, not how your kind have been treating us. You are my equal. You've proven that. I would not think to treat you any other way. Then... Thank you. I... As I said before, I don't like you. I respect you. I still don't like you. Well. I don't dislike you as much as I did. Well, that's progress, at least. We'll see. Because I definitely like you. And she sort of... It's like a half frown, half scowl at that, but... Again, we'll see. We shall. And he kind of, at that, like his helmet drops to the ground. Does he pick it up? <laughs> no. And he lets his shield kind of clatter to the ground. Let us see what is out there together. With no shield and no sword. I didn't drop my sword. I can get another shield. One a little less, um, obvious. Good, because I'm not dropping my sword. I should probably walk and stand beside him. <laughs> so as the two of you are standing there, at a monument to civil and military unrest, a uneasy peace has been formed. Is that safe to say? Mm-hmm. 
All right, then if the destination is Rome, which would take every day of two months to reach, where are you two in three weeks? Um, because he wanted to see the um, the site where his uh, parents perished. They would land near Pompeii. So he may give respects to um, he was not there when the uh, volcano erupted when uh, Vulcan let loose his horrid punishment upon the world and they would land somewhere near there to a town that has basically been wiped off the earth so you two look upon just that a segment of the Roman Empire that was reminded by nature that empire is a word of biology. It means nothing to the earth. And so as you stare there and look, two of you feel a nausea creep through your stomachs different than at any time you've ever come into contact with one another. It's distinct. Strong. But definite. And it is not a Roman or a Celt. And Tiberius would uh, look up from his quiet mutterings. Hand would go to hilt. And uh, do you feel that? I, I do. And again, very similarly, hand to hilt. And just I'm scanning the horizon, whether it's trees or wherever, whatever's around us. Uh, without the need for a roll, you would see coming from up the coastline from whence, you know, from the north, you would see a rider approaching. Uh, Tiberius would kind of take a stance uh, side by side with, uh, with Bree and slowly pull his sword out, uh, but not hold it in a threatening manner, just um, kind of put the tip down into the ground, hand resting on the hilt. She would do something very similar, sort of try stand that little bit taller. A friend of yours? No. An enemy then? Perhaps. Good. The rider approaches. And as they get and close within 50 meters, 40, 30, the rider swings the mount and slides off the back. You can see from this distance he is an older man, long salt and pepper hair with a beard. And as he moves closer, he says, you all are very difficult to find. Um, well, um, we certainly apologize. Who is it that is looking, if I may ask? My name is Takne. Takne, I am Tiberius. The Roman. Um, yes, I, I am a Roman. I don't know if I'm the Roman, but 
you are to me. <laughs> That's high praise. And you are the Count? Apparently so. To you, I'm assuming, the Celt. You are indeed. And what are you? I'm here to offer you a bargain. A, a bargain? Does Would this have will... anything to do with, the, with us putting a sword to us? Not in a manner of speaking. Uh. Do you know what you are? Well, Cursed. Pretty damn hard to kill. He looks at both of you. Yes. Are you the same? I am. Ah. So, what, pray tell, can you enlighten us with, then, since you've been looking for us for so long? I've noticed that you haven't killed one another. We tried very yeah, we, hard. Yeah, we've, we've been there. We, we worked our way through it and, uh, you know, decided to move on. You're not still trying. Which is good. I'm it sure shows. she's thought about it once or twice. I have. You look good. Well, then my bargain comes in two different ways. I can tell you why you are the way you are. At least everything I know. But if you feel like you must finish the task, and he indicates the two of you. There is a way to kill one another. So there is a way, and he kind of like looks out the corner of his eye at, at Bree to join our ancestors. If that's what you believe. Well, I can't wait. I accept your bargain. And you? A stranger rides towards us. Who are you? And I don't mean your name. I mean, what are you? He is the Roman. I am the Celt. What are you? The Egyptian. How far back? It's a, it's a fair claim. Um, how far back um, would you say that you go as the Egyptian. He leans forward and a smile cracks through the salt and pepper. Wow. Oh, far enough. He raises his hands and walks towards Brenna. Stay where you are. I know nothing but your name and that you are the Egyptian. Tell us your information. Well, first I'd have you believe me. Do you believe that I am like you? I'm assuming you are like us. But do you believe? Why else would you come to us? I could be a thief. I mean, you can try. I 
could. He takes another step forward. Stay where you are. Or. If you believe I am like you, how will you kill me? He does have you there, Bree. There's a lot more things worse than death. I didn't say I was going to kill you. I said I want your information. You approached my, it's just my friend and I here. What is it you want? Your help. Please explain. Shall we sit down, perhaps share a meal? And at this, she looks to Tiberius, almost confused. <laughs> this is not something that she normally does. And Tiberius kind of like looks at the two of them. And he sheathes his sword and turns around, starts unpacking his, uh, his pack. <laughs> Bruno, you feel it, just as I do. He is like us, just as that day. He knows who we are. I'm ready to hear what he has to say. It's over there, like, starting a fire. Mm. Brenna won't sit. She'll probably just go and stand beside Tiberius as he sort of fixes up this fire. Sword's still out, just again rested, though, not threatening. We'll cut to about 45, 60 minutes later with the fire going and Takne has taken his own sword and placed it beside him as he sits cross-legged in front of the fire. It's cool, but not to the point where the fire is <laughs> keeping you alive. Um, he indicates positions around the, the flame. Shit, everyone. Tiberius sits. Brenna hesitates, but does sit eventually. I will tell you, there are others like us. Some good. Some human. We cut off one another's heads. That is how you kill one of us. If your neck leaves your shoulders, it's over. Well, Brenna, would have been better if you, uh, it been my first Celt of the day. Would it have would given you what you desired. It would seem so. Why the head from the shoulders, I wonder? I couldn't say. But... But you know, it, though. When it's done, everything that you are goes to the one that killed you. It's a transference, much like when we are in proximity with one another. That feeling. It's called the quickening. Have you met others like us then? Surely, if you have felt this, then you have. 
I have. And I have taken heads as mine has been desired by others. So do you know if there's, if there's an accounting of all these others like us? Do you know how many there are? Who is to say? But they will come for you. And when they do, you must... It is single combat. That is why two of us traveling together is unique. Friends, you say. Well, you heard the lady. I would agree. That's what I am. You cannot fight together. If you are friends and they come for you, they will challenge, and only one of you may fight. If you break that law, they will come for you in force. How very honorable. And that is why I need your help. There are those among us who are stronger. They hunt, they take, they grow. I don't know if that describes you or not, but for certain they will come for you. You walk beside one another, that is a good sign. I would like you to fight with that same passion and heart to rid us of some of these darker beasts. So it does sound like you're trying to recruit us. It doesn't sound that way, I am. Ah. Well. I've become a bit disillusioned of those trying to recruit me to some great crusade. You'll have to apologize. I'll have to apologize for. It sounds like you want us to hunt down those that hunt down others. No. I want you to prepare. This is not a campaign you can walk away from, Roman. You must accept it. They will come for you. They will come for your friend. They will come for me. If we are ready, we have learned. Perhaps we can stop them. You, Celt. Yes. Do you wish to fight? Or do you wish peace? I do not know what I wish at this moment. But from the sounds of it, I will have to fight regardless. Tagne, you claim that not all are these types, these brigands, these hunters, you call them. What of the others? What are they? How do they fit into this if they aren't hunting us? Some of them hide. Keep up the appearance of being mortal. Some of them wander the earth, experiencing a 
everything. But make no mistake, they are hunted. It might take a day or a million of them, but they are hunted. I am not telling you what to be. I'm not telling you to be warriors, but I can't. I need you to prepare. I need you to be ready. I am always ready. As as am I. Tagne. Or is there something more we should know? I could teach you. What can an old Egyptian teach a Roman and a Celt? How not to die. I'm listening. Then let us start. And we will say that for the next predetermined period of time, Takne gives the following information. You are safe only on holy ground. No one will break that law. The aforementioned, you may only fight one versus one. When your head comes from your neck, it's over. But most importantly, at some point, there will be a call to a faraway land known as the Gathering, where those that remain will battle to the last. And the winner, the last among you, will get the prize, of which Takne has no idea what that might be. But his theory being, with the combined energies of all of you, it would be godlike. As he teaches you this, he has you jumping from stone to stone. He has you moving large rocks from here to there. And he has you playing in the surf with a blindfold on. So what I would like you to do as this montage catches us, I would like both of you to roll a might roll. All right. I would like both of you to roll a speed roll. And I would like both of you to roll an intellect roll for me, please. A lot of 13s in there, Pruitt. A lot of single digits in there, Alice. <laughs> um, as the instruction goes out, and as the training sequence takes place, how long would you stay with Tafne? A month? A year? Um, at this point, um, Tiberius has resigned himself to, I mean, and accepted fully, we're immortal. So I would think that he would uh, grow accustomed to Takne, uh, but also to, to Brenna. Um, the day they, that they met Takne, her calling him her friend, that was the first time that anything, she had said anything closely resembling like something kind towards him like that i would i would assume um and so you know as long as they're training together uh tiberius uh grows almost happy uh being side by side with this celt uh, who they shared so much um and just enjoying the moment for what it is Um, this is 
not Brenna's learning style, as we can quite clearly tell. So she actually probably, for the first time, laughs. She's probably falling over in the surf. She doesn't... This is nothing to what she's normally used to. She's probably actually enjoying it. It's training without the, the hurt. And she is terrible at it. And she hasn't been terrible at fighting in a very long time. So finding something that is actually challenging her. She's enjoying it. She's finding it funny and she's enjoying the evenings of talk, even if she doesn't talk that much. But she comes to enjoy it. Just probably the first moment of peace she's actually had. Fantastic. So as this goes on, how long would you stay? He will teach you until a year's time. But you two are already proven warriors. Mm -hmm. There's only so much you can teach the Roman and the Celt. But uh, Tiberius would recognize this this ability, this quickening, the, the senses of, of the warriors, of the beasts around them. It, it's more about, um, he's got all the basic training done. And so he has no problem spending a year trying to perfect this, this sense um, trying to feel like range far out to feel the, the Brenna and, and, and Takne, uh, to see how far he can push this, this sensation. Um, so yeah, he would, he would definitely spend as much time as possible trying to perfect that. Um, okay. same with Brenna because she traveled to learn. The whole thing for her was that she would meet other people, learn their styles so she could not be caught off guard again so whatever this this new person had to give she would take it okay so as you are learning these things from top nay there he is charismatic he teaches you more than just the jumping to stones and the moving of rocks in addition to all that, he teaches you exactly what he knows about the the extension of this sense known as the quickening. He allows you and teaches you how to feel it in animals, in mortals, um, how it's weaker but distinct. Uh, how about each of you roll for me a straight d20? It is at the time that you are pressing the boundaries, trying to feel and sense the quickening before it would normally kick in, Pruitt, as Tiberius is concentrating or meditating or, or doing whatever it is that he would do to kind of extend these senses, he starts to be able to extend his range, if you will, um a sense of and it's weird because this is a an additional sense it's an additional just like sight and smell and touch and taste um you become aware of when something comes into focus you know how far away something is before you can see it or hear it um you can feel this sense growing stronger as it stretches out 10 15 20 feet beyond where it had been before and you feel this ability to reach out, become almost second nature. You no longer have to concentrate or meditate on it. It begins to just be. And I would like you to give yourself the cipher of extended quickening as you have gifted yourself with a immortal radar, if you will. Also, during one of the evenings where you are all taking to table, we'll say that you have found a small place in northern Italy. 
um, some place that will allow you all of the areas that you need to to um, visit for your training. Uh, Takne will approach Brenna, and he will extend his hand. probably been a while she's been with them so she takes it he helps you to your feet if you are sitting and looks and says do you dance and she looks at him with utter confusion like, no I never have you'll need it's to do you mean in battle? You can already do that. I mean, two what? people moving to preferably music, but a rhythm. Why would I need to? Because too much of one thing and too little of another is like having a shield you cannot lift. So, I need to know how to do this? You do. Ugh. You've taught me well before, so teach me again. As there isn't any music playing, he will tell you to focus and reach out like he has and you feel the quickening around you, the beating of a bird's heart, the slower beat of a stag nearby. It offers a bit of a natural rhythm as the quickening feels and comes in waves. It provides a music of its own, a music for the immortals. And as he begins to move you around in a dance that is designed to expose every part of your body that shouldn't be. You're giving your back to an enemy. You're giving your side and your flank to an enemy. It goes against everything that Brenna has probably been taught about how to move around the aforementioned dance of the battlefield. But I'd like you to roll a d20 for me as this is oh my god <laughs> i'm going to re i'm just going to have to reload roll 20 <laughs> he, he he's working with you and then he go he he stops and he looks over at tiberius yeah tiberius who has been uh actively trying not to look over at what's going on and actively trying not to be, uh, feel a pang of, is that jealousy? He's not sure. He looks over. And he, he smiles apologetically to Brenna. I am sorry, my dear, but I don't think that we're in shank. Let me, Roman, could you help an old man? <clears throat> Oh, um, yeah, of course. Need to get to the chamber pot. He offers, he moves away, offering his position to Tiberius in the dance. And again, with Tiberius's earlier roles to hear the, the music of the immortals is even stronger. There is a music and a vibrancy do the two of you dance? Uh, Tiberius will hesitantly uh, reach out for, for Brenna's hand, but not take it. She will probably stare at his hand a while. And in her head, she's saying, you need to learn this, you need to learn this, you need to learn this. And almost as an excuse, uses that I will tread on you. And she takes your hand. 
and he he kind of pulls her close. Um, God's willing. It's a bit of a different sort of dance, isn't it, compared to what we've done before? It is, but not all the world's an enemy, and not all dances end in blood. As you begin to move, Tokne sits back as he's the only one that can hear both of you. The identical heartbeats, the identical sensation of the quickening. I want you both to roll a d20 and we're going to take the highest one. So, 